sing this song for our heart. Tell the world who, who we are. May the sun shine your light. I will never leave your side, your side, your side. My name is John Forte. I'm from uh, Brownsville, Brooklyn. I am a filmmaker, a producer, a writer, musician, um, a New Yorker. My, my, my mom, who raised my, my sister and, and me on her lonesome, was never a, a pusher, and, and, and she didn't pressure either of us to, to do things. So for me, I, um, I remember signing up for, for music in school, so I picked up a violin when I was eight, and, and that was the beginning of it. While I thought that my training with the violin was good, I met kids who, who had, whose training surpassed mine you know, by, by, by many, many years, and that was really humbling. And then I had to ask myself, all right, well, if I can't be number one violin, what can I be number one at? And, and that's when I think my, my desire to, to be uh, the best lyricist that I could be, that's when that really emerged. That ambition led John straight to the executive level, becoming the director of A&R at Raucous Records at 19. It was here that Forte would be introduced to, and eventually become a part of, the celebrated hip hop group, the Fugees. From that collaboration, there was so much success. How did that make you feel? Here I am, 19, 20, 21, coming from Brownsville, going to Phillips Exeter Academy, coming home, uh, having the opportunity to work with the Fugees, traveling the world, being nominated for awards, winning some of those awards, and uh, then being groomed for my solo album. So when the album was released, it came out to critical success but commercial disappointment. So instead of asking myself, well, what did I do wrong or what could I have done better, it was so easy for me to say, well, you guys failed me. You know, the, the record company failed me, management failed me. So I went up to Sony, you know, with, with, with one finger pointing at everyone else, you guys all failed me. And, and Sony swiftly released me from my contract, essentially dropped me from the, the label. John looked for a financial opportunity which would support his music and became a middleman who acquired couriers for a drug dealer. And it wasn't because I wanted to be a drug dealer myself, but I saw it as a means to an end. I would make enough money. And when the House of Cards did fall and two of the couriers were, were apprehended in Houston, Texas, uh, the only person they knew in the operation was me, so I ended up being named and, and being indicted. It was a first-time nonviolent uh, drug offense, and in 2001, I was sentenced to 168 months or 14 years in a federal prison. Oh, Lord, penalties for suffering can seem so hard. Dreaming the days when everything's so dark. Tried to walk good, where does that road start a show? I was about three years into my sentence that a friend of mine came to me with a guitar, but unbeknownst to him, I did not know how to play the guitar. He assumed that because of my musical background that, uh, that, that this would be the light that I needed in, in the darkness. And while I didn't know it at that moment, he was absolutely right, because days later I actually picked the guitar up and I strummed a little bit. and. Uh, and I was determined to learn how to play it. And I taught myself, you know, a couple of chords at a time how to, how to play the instrument. And that was, that was probably the most empowering moment of my life because for years I'd been beholden to DJs or other people to make music for me, uh, but I was never able to accompany myself. In 2008, John's 14-year prison sentence was commuted by the president, and he was a free man a testament to the dedication of those who tirelessly campaigned on his behalf, including iconic singer Carly Simon. I don't ever want it to be misconstrued that, that I'm, I'm glorifying the mistake that I made and that I'm, I'm somehow benefiting from that. Did being incarcerated change your musical sensibilities? Yes. I think, I think you feel like an animal when you, are, when you are in prison. You feel like an animal when you're in that cage. So I wanted to, I wanted to contribute to myself is, is to prove to myself that you know what, you are not a thing, you are not an animal. And I think that that, 
was a pivotal point for me in terms of how I would make music and what my music would be about. It would be about my quest uh, for, for, for dignity. In the years since his release, John continues his quest for dignity through new music, writing a memoir, directing films, and embarking on a multimedia adventure. It's the type of work that allows him to nurture that creative spirit within. Because for so many years, I was either living in the past, regretting things, or living in the future, and I hope this happens, I hope that happens, and I was taking the present for granted. So, one of my favorite sayings is, you know, it was what it was, it is what it is, and it will be what it will be. I can't change the past, and I can perhaps influence the future to a degree, but the only thing that I truly possess is this moment. I've been blessed, and I feel blessed, and the only thing that I can hope for is to continue to be blessed and to hopefully know that I am blessed uh, even at times when I, when I think that I'm not.